Good evening, YouTube, or at least good evening where I'm recording this voiceover. Obviously, it's daytime here, so I'm all set up. I'm ready to launch. I'm just doing a couple of pre-flight checks before I do this first flight. It is going to be a tale of two flights today. The up, the down, the good, the bad. Uh, unfortunately, the it's a forced landing on the second one. Uh, as you can see, as I'm taking off, I'm dealing with a right quartering wind, so I had quite a lot of crosswind to contend with as I took off. Um... But I did get her up. She is flying. Uh, if you take a look down at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see that it's uh, 60 amps is what this ESC draws. And um, right now, this OSD module, which, by the way, is still the Skylark. It's still set up with the Skylark OSD that I mentioned in the last video. Um, it, uh, it's a 12-volt system. So right now, what I'm running is two three-cell batteries. And the Skylark is actually only measuring the first of the two cells. So that's why you're seeing it in the um, 10 to 12 volt range down there. Um, of course, the milliamp hours, I really should only go to about 2,500 milliamps because these are 3,200 milliamp batteries. So, you know, with drawing that much current out of the battery, it is uh, sucking those things dry really, really quick. So, as you can tell, this is going to be a short flight. Um, but yeah, this is looking down at the Lennox parking lot um, in the summer of 2016. And <clears throat> just buzzing around, getting familiar with this aircraft. Uh, you can tell, 80 miles an hour in that dive. Uh, airspeed is the left-hand side, altitude, of course, is the right-hand side. And, uh, you know, th this, this airplane is just so, so much faster than I was ever used to. And this is the uh, second flight I think I've got with this aircraft. So, it, getting ready to line it up for a landing and... Um, Kicking out the flaps, dropping the gear, you can see the airspeed drops down to the 30s, and uh, she drops altitude pretty good. Oh yeah, go back and look earlier in the video, you'll see that ship passing. Um, this is right along the Delaware River. Uh, you can see the GPS coordinates up on the top. Go ahead and plug them into your Google, and you'll see where I was flying this guy. So here we go, coming down, second landing of the day. I'm gonna shoot that gap right there, and uh, here we go, here we go, touchdown one. Touchdown two, and touchdown three, four. All righty, got her back on the ground. Um, I realized very quickly that I, I really needed to take this to my airfield. Um, this, this receiver that I have doesn't have any kind of protection in it. It doesn't have any stabilization. It doesn't have anything. Oh. As you can see, I hit myself in the leg. Uh, <laughs> so, so... It's really dicey for me to fly this thing. I've got no ability to recover, um, no panic mode, which is what I'm used to with the uh, Apprentice. The Apprentice at least has uh, a panic mode. Now, later on in the season, I will install a different OSD that does have those functions. That's not my car. That's got just some guy that passed by the van there. That's me. Um, but yeah, so later on in the season, you'll see that I go ahead and I install a different OSD that um, a, a Cyclops Tornado OSD and uh, but for now it's all just GPS driven so realizing how on the hairy edge I am as I pull into the parking lot here uh, I figure maybe I should take this guy over to the RC airfield and that way I've got a little bit of backup and we'll take a look at that next all right, so here we are at the RC airfield. Uh, just got it powered up, systems checked. Now, I screwed up a little bit. If you take a look, the if you go back, you'll see that the OSD isn't exactly right. It, it's not, you don't see all the stuff in the lower left-hand corner that you normally would. Right now, we're only seeing amperage draw. We're not seeing the current voltage or the milliamps consumed. Um, and it's because, for some reason, when this guy's set up to record, it recorded in um, PAL instead of NTS. So here we go, gonna taxi out and try and set up for a takeoff. Mm. 
One difference you'll notice between the Trojan and the Apprentice is that in the Trojan I have an extra channel so I can actually tilt my head up and down, which is very, very nice. I still love this cockpit view. It is so beautiful being able to have all that cockpit glass and the, the fake instrument panel. One of these days I want to put landing gear indicators in there, just a couple of diodes. So for this flight, much like the last one, I'm still running on two 3S batteries that are linked up in series, and that is going to become a major problem as we get towards the end of this flight. So here we are doing pre-checks, flaps are at takeoff, half level, and here comes the rollout. do have a beautiful sunset. It's late in the evening. Again, this is uh, summer 2016, probably mid to late August. Yeah, flaps up, gear up. You can see it's a 65 mile an hour airplane. Now, anybody from the AMA, don't look at the fact that I flew behind the flight line. I'm still getting used to this airplane. So give me a little bit of give me a little bit of break there. <laughs> yeah, bits of data that I know from having flown at this airfield a lot. I'm about 800 to 900 feet away from the airfield when I'm out over the water there. 1,200 feet is the opposite shore. Uh, you're not going to see it in this video again because of the way the, the screen set up. But at least we are getting airspeed and altitude, so 400 feet. I'm using a right-hand circular polarized, so every time I fly over my own position, I'll go ahead and we'll have an interruption signal like that. So for now, I'm going to go quiet and let the music play and let the flight continue. If, however, you want to skip the flight and jump right to the part where I'm forced landed, then by all means, go ahead and jump to 12 minutes and 45 seconds and you'll see my forced landing.
love doing these low passes over the field. The guys really like how the airplane looks. And the guy that was standing next to me was telling me that it was flying really, really nice. I'm testing out the flaps to see whether or not I can get this thing to fly right, so you'll see the flaps are a little bit deployed. You'll also notice every time I turn this bank, one of my entry points is always to make sure I'm on top of those trees right there. Just to make sure I can maintain line of sight with the aircraft. And then I'll fly down this tree line. But I'm just now starting to feel like the airplane's a little bit sluggish. She's not as responsive as I would like it to be. I'm thinking it's the drag from the flaps. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to do one more extension. What I don't realize is that one of the cells in the batteries is about to die. And I'm going to go from a 6 cell to a 5 cell. Keep an eye on the altitude on the right. I'm going to go ahead and do my bank. I'm full throttle right now. Bank and left. And I'm looking at that tree line, and I'm realizing I'm below the tree line. And right about now, I realize I'm in danger. I'm going to lose this bird. So I, right now, I'm trying to swing her around, and I'm just like, this is what's going through my mind, guys. There's the shore. Make the shore. Make the shore. Make the shore. Find the closest point. Make the shore. Make the shore. You'll notice the video breaks up real bad right here. That's because my spotter, Joe, told me that right at this point, the airplane dipped below the bush you see in front of you, and he could no longer see the airplane. Later on, when we did a post-flight analysis, we realized that it was at this point, anyone who was not flying first person like I was, would have lost control of the airplane and put it into the lake. Flying first person saved me this day. Back to the flight. Make the shore, make the shore. Avoid terrain, avoid terrain, avoid terrain. Make the field, make the field, make the field, make the field. Avoid the dog, iron dog. Touchdown. Oh my god, I made it! We're gonna take a moment. The guys are talking to me right now. I'm, I'm catching my breath over there. And they want me to try and goose it again. So I'm gonna pull the flaps up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more burst of engine but as you're gonna see it's not gonna work after this I had to send the recovery team out to get the airplane 